going by the trends, UP in Bihar, by elections, results can throw up a major upset. In both seats in Uttar Pradesh, Samajwadi Party candidates are leading. This time around, BSP, which is Bahujan Samajwadi Party, supported SP candidates in both Phulpur and Gorakhpur by elections. Gorakhpur seat was held earlier by UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath when he was sitting member of Lok Sabha. He had won this constituency five times. If SP-BSP combined defeats BJP in UP, the idea of third front will gain ground. The trend is also a warning sign to Bharti Janata Party that BSP and SP can repeat 1993 elections when both the parties jointly contested and won. They defeated Bharti Janata Party at that point of time, which was doing pretty well in, con in, in the wake of uh, Ram Janam Bhumi movement. And they went on to form the government. The unity did not last long. Mayavati later dished Malayam Singh Yadav and joined hands with Bharti Janta Party. Uh, on this, I am joined by my colleague uh, Saleh. Saleh, this is uh, this uh, not to use the word unprecedented, but this is a very important development which has taken place in India, uh, especially in Uttar Pradesh, because Bharti Janta Party, when it swept to power in 2014, out of 40 seats in Bihar and out of 80 seats in Uttar Pradesh, BJP had 71 seats in Uttar Pradesh. And more than, more than 70% in Bihar combined both the states and they crossed 100 seats. And that, that, that was the backbone of the BJP. Now, going by this, what can you tell us? Absolutely, Karthi. Now, that, that is an interesting sort of a statistic to analyze because in 2014, in the general elections, as you just pointed out, out of 80 seats, uh, Uttar Pradesh that sends to the parliament, 71. I mean, look at the strike rate. That's well over 90%. They were, in fact, won by the BJP. This, this was quite phenomenal. And apart from that, a similar sort of a trend uh, was repeated in Bihar. So these two states essentially form the backbone. Now, elections are just a year away. Can the BJP repeat what it did in 2014? This is what would have worried a lot of people sitting in the BJP. But let's also point out what has, in fact, happened in this particular bipole. Uh, you know, two parties which over the course of the last two, two and a half decades uh, who had always been big adversaries, the Samajwadi Party and also the Bahujan Samaj Party, they have come together because they realize that it is a question of existence for them. Now, in 2014, what is interesting is Mayawati won no seats whatsoever. This was something which had surprised everyone. This was something that perhaps, you know, Mayawati would have looked at, uh, you know, very, very seriously. And that is what has brought the Samajwadi Party and the BSP to come together. The interesting experiment of what was done in the assembly elections where the Samajwadi Party had tied up with the Congress, uh, that has not been repeated this time round. Akhilesh Yadav has decided to tie up with Mayawati and it appears that that, you know, that tactical decision of staying away from Congress and allying with uh, the Bahujan Samajwadi parties perhaps yielded results. But also just a word of caution here, Kartike, because it is interesting if you look at the voter turnout, it was extremely poor. In the case of Gorakhpur, it was just 47 percent. In the case of Pulpur, it was only about 37 percent. Now, the analysts would also turn around and say that perhaps because the core voters of the BJP thought that, look, they were going to win anyway, and perhaps uh, this was not that influential in, in, in terms of the bigger context. Not many of them turned up at the voting votes to vote. Uh, so this is a word of caution which uh, Akhilesh Yadav and Mayavati will have to keep in mind because the voter turnout was extremely low, and the result of this by-election, although, could be a sort of a compass in direction of which the mood could be pointed out, but it still has to be taken with a pinch of salt. You know, Saleh, but the most important takeaway here is, the most important takeaway here is that the Dalit vote, which is, which constitutes a big chunk when it comes to Northern India, mm -hmm. it was broken in two parts. It mm -hmm. actually got split when the assembly elections took place mm -hmm. in Uttar Pradesh. And when BJP swept to power with 300 plus seats, the so-called Jata and non-Jata vote split, which, which in itself is a hierarchy within the exploited community. Mm -hmm. it, so it goes on to show that Dalit community, which forms the vote bank of Bharti Janata Party, completely was completely transferred to Samajwadi Party. There was at a workers level cooperation, mm -hmm. and what it does is it fires up the idea of third front. You know, though the idea of third front is not new. Ram Manohar Lohia in '67 actually went to Nagpur 
and uh, had a meeting with RSS functionaries so Jansang and Socialist Party could collaborate. And that was the first time Congress lost more, a dozen state, dozen state uh, assemblies. And you had non-Congress governments in 1967. But then after that, all the all the idea of the Third Front rested mm -hmm. in the domain of anti-Congressism. So 67, 1977, which was Jai Prakash Narayan, 1989, anti-Rama Rao and V.P. Singh. 1996, again it went to V.P. Singh, but the Prime Ministers were Deva Gowda and Gujral. Mm -hmm. So the whole Third Front politics was against Congress, but the Congress is so emaciated in terms of its numbers that it creates a great paradox for them. And uh, Saleh, the paradox for the Congress will be that now with this win, which mm -hmm. is now a certain possibility, they will end up they will end up supporting the third front, which happened in 1996 and 1998. But what happened in process was that the third front disintegrated. That's but Congress could not come back to power. And Atal Bihari Vajpayee was again sent mm -hmm. to Lok Sabha in mm -hmm. 1998 and 1999 twice. So the Congress, the politics of Congress is not successful with a third front. The politics of the Congress is to have an alliance, right. which they did in similar adivation. So it opens up a lot of possibility in Indian politics. Mm -hmm. And this is not about Uttar Pradesh, Saleh. This is not about Uttar Pradesh. This is, this is not about UP. This is about what Rahul Gandhi will be doing. Mm -hmm. This will be about what Sonia Gandhi will be doing. It will be about what Amit Shah will do. And it will be about how Prime Minister will conduct his heartland politics, Saleh. Right. Absolutely. Now, now, Kartika, if I could just ask you a question on this. How would Congress view the results of this by-election? Because in both the seats of Uttar Pradesh, they've got very marginal sum of votes, about 5,000 in either constituency. How would they be looking up as to how this would pan out for them for the 2019 elections? See, there are two views here. First view is that the Congress should have supported Samajwadi Party candidates. Mm -hmm. But then you have to understand it from the logic of the people who work in the organization. Right. The logic of the organization was that if you continue to cede space to a regional party, you will end up becoming a minor player again and again. Right. So if you remember the results of Uttar Pradesh, Samajwadi Party and Congress had an alliance. Mm -hmm. BJP swept to power. But the worst was reserved for Congress where their vote share shrunk from 13.1%, I think, to 6.67%, which was even less than Apna Dal, which is confined to three Lok Sabha constituencies or, or the Eastern UP, which is Mirzapur, Banaras and adjoining areas, which mm -hmm. is Sonilal Patel's constituency. His daughter today is Minister of State for Health, Anupriya Patel. Mm -hmm. So for this reason, the Congress had to go for, you know, a fight which they knew they would lose but to nourish the organization because if right. you do not nourish the organization you will end up creating situations or dead mm -hmm. zones which congress ended up doing in nagaland and supra where lock stock and barrel right lock stock and barrel they vote actually went to bharti janta party and also Kartikeya, let's also talk about what is happening in bihar because there are three seats which which for which results are in fact presently uh, being counted, the votes are being counted. In Babwa, it is BJP which is leading. In Jahanabad, it is RJD which is leading. And in Araria, the fight is extremely interesting because the um, you know percentage of votes, or rather the number of votes which separates the two parties is just 500 votes. And it is BJP which is leading in Araria. So two out of three, it looks like it is likely to go in the BJP's way. I think that, that you know before we end this uh, section, I think this uh, I think this is a very important point you have made, and I'm going to conclude your point by saying this. Mm -hmm. You know, th th there are particularities of Mahagadbandhan. What Congress and RJD and uh, JDU were able to achieve in Bihar, they were not able to achieve in West Bengal, where Congress had a tie-up with uh, the left parties. They were not able to uh, achieve in uh, UP, where Samajwadi Party and uh, Congress had a tie-up. But BSP and SP are able to do so. So there are particularities related to it. But I think, you know, I would conclude this uh, part of my bulletin by saying that what it does is that it creates a piquant situation for the Congress. And the situation is whether they would lead the front like UPA, will it be a UPA or will it be a third front? And I right. think if they can forge a UPA, it will be the success of the Congress party. If it's a third front, I think it's a very bad idea. But nonetheless, these results a giveaway mm -hmm. as to how volatile and as to how unpredictable and as to how quickly things change when it comes to politics in India. Thank you, Saleh. Thank you for joining.